shitting me right now. That movie sucks ass. Yeah, this movie sucks. Welcome to the tribe for those of you listening to the first time. What's chiefin' everyone? I hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday. What's up, Bryce? How you doing, bud? I'm doing ho oh, oh, ho horrible. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho no. Ho oh, holy Toledo, let me tell you. I've got a ho- hold on. I've got a ho oh, oh, ho ho the size of Kansas in my arteries right now. That is horrible. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've done that with- is ho- ho- horrible. Yeah, I'm done with this shtick. I'm sure people are loving it right now. I'm doing okay, man. Oh, yeah, it's December. I'm filling every day with a ungodly amount of Christmas music and sitting next to the Christmas tree, and I'm just soaking in. I feel like I said this earlier I've, today. I feel like Thanksgiving came and passed like it was a blip on the radar. But I'm gonna. I want to soak in all of Christmas. I feel like. We all deserve to just get Christmas overload this year. Yeah, for sure. I felt the same way about Thanksgiving. Um, you know, like usually you have leftovers. We had like two days of leftovers, and my mom's like, "We're making it into a big soup." And I'm like, "What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go through it all now." Yeah, I'm like, "We gotta, we gotta eat the soup now. We gotta make it now." <laughs> and then we had everyone over for like the barbecue on Sunday, and they all just had soup. I'm like, this is such a weird part. Of- I, I, I can imagine having like everyone over to have fun. You're like, dude, everyone come on over. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have some soup. And then we're just going to chill out, man. We're going to read some books. Like, that's what it felt like to me. I was oh like, my God. this is really weird. Dude, low key, I hate soup. I hate soup so you- much. The only time soup is good is when you add other stuff to it. The best part about soup night to me is the grilled cheese. If we're doing chicken noodle soup and, or like even tomato soup. And then like oh, even the tomato really... Tomato soup with grilled cheese. The really, really good soups, you're just adding a shit ton of like meat and beans in it and stuff. It's But the soup is disgusting. It's bath water. I've never liked the like the broth and stuff. Like people, people are like, oh dude, I love the broth at the end of the soup. No, fuck that. I like the meat, the beans, the whatever else is in there. Like, oh my God, chili. Chili is exactly. good. Do you like Chili's practically it's like soup. It's like the only thing that I would consider good soup. I don't I wouldn't even consider that soup. I'd maybe what I'd consider that a stew. Is that a stew? Oh, probably more like a stew, yeah. But it's I mean like the, I haven't like, recently. Do you like, like the milk or do you like cereal and milk? You like cereal and milk. No one like just pours a bowl of milk to eat the milk because that's a psychotic. Who thing the to fuck do. pours it in a bowl? I'm not a cat. I'm not sitting on all fours and going meow and rubbing <laughs> people's, people's legs. That's so funny. That got Indio to bark. <laughs> Me and saying, you, yeah, and you're in my earphones <laughs> or headphones. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Dude, he's the funniest. Like, he'll be dead asleep. Like, last night, he's dead asleep, but then he'll have a dream and he just goes, <laughs> like he's barking at something in his dream. <laughs> uh, Dude, Max lately has been snoring so loud. And then he's like having these weird kind of dreams as well. And he'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then out of nowhere, I'm not even kidding, dude. It was at least a minute long of his howl. No, maybe not, not maybe not a minute, maybe like 45 seconds. But he was like, did he wake just, himself like, up? No, it was like mid dream, and he was just getting increasingly louder. And I'm like, what the fuck? There's no way no one's hearing this right now, and Jeez. nobody in the house woke up from it. That's nuts. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And then uh, you know how like there's that trend on TikTok now where. People lay their babies down on the bed and then they like have them fake run with their feet and they pull their legs down and then scrunch it up and it makes the ki- the baby fart. No. Oh, I, you haven't seen I that? I don't know that. No. What the fuck? That's, what the hell? This is a trend? It's, I, dude, it's hilarious. It's because it's like loud farts. <laughs> it's, it's so like, funny. <laughs> it's like, just imagine like you're a, a Hollywood executive. Like, all right, we need ideas, folks. We need ideas. Okay. I got it. <laughs> We're going to make a baby fake run and then pull its leg and scratch it up. He's going to fart. Oh, that's brilliant. It's brilliant. Genius. All right. Okay. And the movie's going to be called Boss Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I saw them doing that trend and I'm like, I wonder if it works on adults, right? So I was going to do it, or sorry, not adults, but like 
regular sized kids. So I was going to do it to Aurora, but then as soon as she laid down, she farted. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm obviously not going to do it to you because you just farted in my freaking face. That's a tainted so, sample. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I was like, oh, I'll do it to Max. So I wanted to see if it would work for a dog. So I did it to him and then I scrunched him up and nothing happened. But then as soon as he rolled over, it was like, Oh, what the hell? It was a loud... I'm like, dude, dog farts usually don't make any sound. And that was, like, forceful. (laughs) There's something there. There's some weird scientific thing to this trend. I wonder if it works on other animals, too. Maybe. I feel like you're about to go on some weird freaking exploration (laughs) and experimentation. Man in California gets arrested for making raccoons fart. (laughs) (laughs) Folks, happy Friday. I hope you've been enjoying this December season. We have, uh, we've been making a ton of content. If uh, our videos aren't out yet, they will be soon. Um, they should be out by now. But any Hoosier, oh, if yeah, you want to sure. find us, you love hearing these beautiful windpipes. Well, our faces are a little bit worse. But if you still want to see that for yourself, check us out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, YouTube. You can find us at Chief in Pod or Chief in Podcast, wherever you desire. And then wherever you're listening right now, if you could do us a big old favor, uh, drop a subscription, like us, rate us, review us. I don't know what they're doing nowadays, but if you could do something to really show us some support digitally, that would be amazing. Yeah, we really appreciate the support, guys. And like you said, we're going to be having a video up soon, and then you'll be able to put a face to the name. And that'll be interesting because I got to be honest, I don't think that I look like my voice. Oh, that's an interesting thought, dude. But we know each other. I feel like I definitely well, don't look like my voice. No, you don't at all. And for everyone if I didn't out there, you, I'm a 6'10 North Korean stallion. <laughs> 6'10 North Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for those that that don't know me, um, ever heard of uh, Sean Stevenson? I look exactly <laughs> like him. Sean Stevenson. Did that guy die? I think that guy might have died. He did die. Oh, I just remember that. Oh, that's so right? sad. I think like within the last year, yeah. Yeah, R.I.P. Dude, fuck 2020, okay? <laughs> for real, dude. California, we got fires again. So it's just, uh, it's the norm, I guess. It's nuts, man. Um, but any Hoosier, yeah. if fuck 2020, but in the same vein of what we were talking about earlier, we're here to spread the cheer this time of year for you questionable people out there. And we would like to address, um, a very hot topic that has made its way around meme pages over the last two years. Um, Christmas movies, some of the most notable Christmas movies out there. We're not going to be ranking them, but we would like to play a game today involving some of those. Daniel, break it down. All right, so since Bryce is ninny of the week, he's been begging me, pleading, please, Daniel, please let us play another game so I can just get rid of this dildo scepter and this ninny crown and ninny leash and ninny throne. I don't want to sit on it anymore. So we're playing a game today that has to be involved, like he said, with movies, Christmas movies. So what we're going to do is we have nine movies, because this time we're going to make sure that we don't tie. Oh my gosh, we can still tie though. No, there's no way we can tie. We're working smarter this time, not harder. Oh, no, no, you're right, you're right. No, 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 we can't tie. Never mind. Unless we both, I mean, if we both guess the same number, we should have a solution here. If we both, that's okay. That's what I was thinking. I'm, but I'm like, wh- what are the chances that's going to happen? I think so, if we do that, then we have to redo and both of us say a different that, number. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Um, so basically what's going to happen is we're going to look up uh, or we're going to say a movie and we're going to guess what the Rotten Tomatoes score is, which is zero to 100. And then we're going to look it up and whoever's closest gets a point. Yeah. And then by the end of the nine movies, whoever has the most points is no longer Ninny or is... Is Again, the not many. So that's great. Ninny. Folks. Yeah. Ooh, the holiday. I don't know. I feel like the more we say this word, there's like a racist undertone to it. A holiday just does not that's there's something there. I don't know. So I actually uh I heard <laughs> I heard from someone that was listening to this, they're like, Yeah, I don't know what a ninny is. And I'm like, Well look it up. And they looked up what it was, and it was like, you know, a foolish person, like a nin- a nincom poop. Uh-huh. And she's like, Oh my gosh. I thought this was way worse than that. I thought it was like something sexual or something racist. And I'm like, no. It kind of has like that no. toad where it like. I it does know. a little bit. The more I say it. Yeah. Now I kind of understand what she's talking about. 
Um, but yeah, folks, we're playing a Rotten Tomatoes game. We did this a few months ago with random movies. Tis the season. We're going to be doing it with nine Christmas movies. I'll run down the list real quickly so you get a taste of what we're addressing. We're doing Home Alone 1, Christmas with the Cranks, Elf, The Grinch with Jim Carrey, uh, Santa Claus, A Christmas Story, Jingle All the Way, Christmas Vacation, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. I think... That kind of has all the top ones covered. I'm not going back to fucking uh, whatever. Jack, I'm poor. Everyone come donate money. Uh, Jenny. What's that one movie? Mary, don't you recognize me? Miracle on 34th Street. It's a Wonderful Life. We were talking about two completely Uh, different movies. It's Miracle on 34th Street. (laughs) Every time in the rain of the week, an angel gets its ring. Or is that the same movie? No, no, never mind. We were talking about the same movie, but you were you said the, the wrong name. It's 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 a wonderful life. What's Miracle on 34th Street? Isn't that a movie? That is a movie, but I think it's is it 34th or 43rd? No, yeah, it's 34th. It's about like Santa, something like that. I don't really know what, what the movie I haven't seen it. Anyway, I think we have but, all the uh, top ones covered, like the notable top ones. There's a few out there, dude, like my, you my threw mom, out Fred My Claus. mom will watch It's a Wonderful Life every single really? year. And I'm like, it's good. I mean, it's good, but I don't like, I'm not like a huge fan of it. Like if I don't watch it this year, I'm not going to be upset about it. If yeah. I don't watch it next year, I probably won't be upset either. Yeah, agreed. Agreed, agreed. Uh, but I think I think you should watch it once every three years. I think I, <laughs> that should be the rule. Mandated Christmas rules. Yes. Um, yeah, but like you said, we don't have we have some other ones that we didn't put on the list because Bryce hasn't seen them. So I'm assuming other people haven't seen them, like yeah, Fred Claus. I haven't seen Fred Claus. Haven't seen Office Christmas Party. That one's just funny. It's hilarious, dude. Jason Bateman's in it. Um, oh, we didn't have and... Four Christmases. I think Four Christmases is a great movie. That was a good movie, but I just completely I just forgot about it. Yeah, I just don't think it like cut. It didn't cut the whatever, you know. Bad Santa's not didn't on there. That's a fun movie. I never actually saw Bad Santa. I heard it's great though. Yeah, you'd like it. All right, let's get into it. Uh, the first movie cool. that we will do is Home Alone One. Ooh, Home Alone One. Okay. Home Alone hey, One, great. To... I just watched it over the weekend with my family. Um, it's an awesome movie. It's well done. I think it's done by John Hughes, whoever did all those eighties. Uh, Breakfast Club. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Maggie, whatever redheaded chick movie. All those. It's he, him that did it. Sixteen Candles. Sixteen Candles. Yeah, see, you know. And for those of you, you know, who live under a rock and don't know what the movie's about, it's about a kid that their whole family's going on vacation, and he gets left behind, and these robbers come and try to take over and and like rob his house. But he's like, it's my house. I need to protect it. Eh. I got a BB gun, and i watching some movies that I shouldn't be watching, and now I'm going to recreate these movies. And that's how violence starts, kids. That's true. That That's how this guy turned into uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. It's because his parents no, this left is how he became. Home. This is how he became Batman. Jigsaw. Oh, Jigsaw. Yeah, that's actually like a theory that, that it, they became, he became Jigsaw from uh, Saw franchise. And that's how Macaulay Culkin got fucked up from childhood fame. Yes, exactly. All right, um, I, I have my ooh. score. Okay, I got mine as well. You ready? Yep. On the count of three. One, two, three. Eighty-five. Wow! Very close. Home Alone. One. Home Alone. Nineteen ninety. What? We're doing thermometer, right? Tomato meter. Yeah. Sixty-five percent. What? Dude, that movie's gold. How is Home Alone sixty-five percent? What was the audience rating? Audience score is only 80%. I would have thought like 90. Oh, God, dude. Mid, I need to readjust for, for all audience. my scores. All my scores are like in the 80s. I think I'm like blinded by Christmas time. <laughs> if I watch these in like March, maybe I would rate them differently. I am blown away. 65%? Like what See, the luckily, second I, one uh, I didn't write down any of my scores. I'm just saying them on the fly. Oh my gosh. The second one with the better pranks is 33%. Oh God. Dude, I love the second one. In New York, it's so good. Yeah. How'd they get... Wow, that's, that is shocking. Wow. Uh, all right. One zero you. Hell yeah. Next on the list is Christmas with the Cranks. Um, this one I love. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. Tim Allen, uh, Girl from Halloween, Activia commercials. 
Can't remember her name. We Tracy forgot Friday. her name before. This is the same girl. I know, and we said the same thing. Oh, no. Uh, short Oh, hair. I remember it. It was, uh, it's Lee Harvey Oswald. No, what's her name? How it's something we... like that, though. It's like, it's like three names. Christmas with the Cranks. Um, her name is... J. J. I think there's a J. J. It's a J. It's definitely a J. J. Jen. J. Jeff. Jer. J. I'm just trying to find the cast of... I think it was Halloween, right? Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Lee Harvey Oswald. Like I said, dude, same amount of syllables. We got it. So Christmas with the Cranks. Everyone knows Jamie Lee Curtis. No one would ever forget her name. She teams up with Tim Allen in this... <laughs> <laughs> lovable Christmas comedy where their daughter is away for Christmas and they think, hey, we always throw the Christmas party for all the neighborhood, but we're getting old. Our daughter's not even here. F it. We're going to go on like a Caribbean cruise. So that leads to a wacky set of events where the neighborhood rebels against them. And then what? They get a call from their daughter. She's coming back to town. So they have to scramble to get everything ready for the party that the daughter expected. If you couldn't tell... I like this movie a lot, and I'm going to be crushed by yeah. the score. You fucking nailed that uh, synopsis, dude. That was amazing. I'm shocked. But you forgot the most important part. When he sprays down his his uh, his walkway with the hose, and then he... The cat? <laughs> the cat gets frozen, and then everyone's like slipping on the walkway. Uh, I have another favorite part from that movie, too, and I love it every time. It's like... Sometimes in movies, it's like, oh, wow, they left that in there. You know what I mean? Kind of like the, the Game of Thrones Starbucks cup, but it's just left in there if that was a thing. There's a scene yeah. where they're rescuing. The firefighters come to rescue Tim Allen, who has fallen off the roof and is like dangling by a cord or something. And as the a- actor firefighters are coming onto the scene, they're grabbing a ladder. And one of the firefighters turns with the ladder and the ladder hits another dude on the head. And you can hear it really loud. And it's hilarious. It's in the movie. And if you are watching Christmas with the Cranks this year, wait for that part near the end where the firefighters are coming and you'll get in on this little secret. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's like in uh, in Star Wars, the same thing happens. One of the stormtroopers hits his head on one of the, like... Oh, really? The rising doors. Yeah. He's like, Dunk! you don't hear anything. You just see him like, oh, fuck. And he just keeps walking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do it. All right. All right. Let's go. So, hang on. I got to think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Three, two, one, 43. 74. <laughs> oh, shit. You think this is better than Home Alone? I just thought it was a little bit better. I don't, this you said it was 60, so I'd still be pretty close with 70-something. No, I said, something. I said 43. Okay, well, I said 74. What I'm saying oh, is my you said 60 gosh. for the last one. Gosh. Daniel, it's it 5%. <laughs> no. <laughs> How could it get five percent? That was, that's like that was the a good movie. worst movie of all time. What the fuck? Oh my god! Wait, hang on. Do me a favor right now. Look up, look up Human Centipede. I want to see the rating on all that right, one. Right. If that's better than so, Christmas with the Cranks, I'm going to be super shocked. How, people don't even like it. It's a thirty-eight percent audience score. Good God! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, all right, Human Centipede. And that you you literally texted me separately. You're like. Christmas with the yeah. Cranks has got to be on there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we got to do Christmas with the Cranks. Human Centipede got a 49% tomato meter. 25% audience. Are you shitting me? And what did the wow. what did the room get? The room got 24%. The room is not a better movie than Christmas with the Cranks. I'm shocked right now. That is horrible. That I is a terrible movie. I did not rating. see that coming. No, I did not. All right, what's the next one? One to one. So now we are going to Elf. Ooh, Elf. For those of you that live under a rock, again, this is about a boy that was raised by elves and did not know that he was a boy and not an elf. And then eventually finds out when he's like 40 years old and then <laughs> that he's like not good at making toys, but he's still, he's not good compared to elves, but he's really good compared to humans. So he's learning like all these different elf trades and then eventually gets sent back to uh, New York to see his dad. And then has to somehow save Christmas with spreading Christmas joy everywhere. That sounds really sexual. Yeah, he like. Uh, well, I think he saves Christmas because like Santa runs out of Santa like crash lands or something, and it's just so happened that yeah. Santa crash lands in Central Park while Buddy the Elf is in New York. 
So he gets yes, everyone because to there's no Christmas spirit, and Christmas spirit is what allows the reindeer to fly. But they have an engine that is attached to the sleigh, <clears throat> and when it comes off, then they they don't have a way to fly anymore because the Christmas spirit yeah, is so low. Because everyone's like, <laughs> he's like, um, what? People don't believe in Santa anymore. They're like, no, there's this there's this lie going around that uh, the parents do that. They they bring the presents to their kids, and he goes, that's. That's ridiculous. I, I and, and the cookies and milk. I suppose they eat those too. <laughs> this is a great movie. It's one of the best Christmas comedies. There's a ton of one-liners in it. Uh, yes, we'll be talking about the Grinch. I think it's very similar to that, where it's I think carried by the weight of like the performances by like some of the best comedian or movie comedians of our time, Will Ferrell and Jim Carrey. Um, so yeah, I I don't know actually what to. Let me think for a second. All right, I'm ready. All right, I'm ready too. Uh, three, two, one, 51. 51? Yeah. I don't like these low ball answers, man. Wow, you were almost right on. It's at 84%. Yes! I'm just like, my gauge doesn't make sense right now to me. How is this a better movie than Home Alone? I guess. <laughs> I mean... What's weird is this got a better tomato score than audience. Audience gave it a 79. Really? Yeah. That's like a well-known movie that everyone watches on Christmas or like during Christmas time. Right, but like I think I- In fact, I would I would even argue to say that this is the number one Christmas movie of all time. This is the movie that everyone watches on Christmas or like in Christmas time. I think Christmas story beats that. I don't know about that one. And All right, let's move to the next one. Just so happens, next up, we're talking about the Grinch. The Grinch is like a uh, was it Doctor Seuss? I feel like I believe it's a Doctor Seuss character. It's a guy that hates Christmas, and he's in a town with people that are all fanatical about Christmas, and he tries to destroy it. And he finds out that they really just want to be around each other, and he's so taken aback by the community. And the love for Christmas, despite all the material things being taken away. So he saves Christmas by returning all the things he stole. And he goes to join the town to celebrate Christmas. However, everyone's used to like the 10 minute little nursery rhyme movie. Jim Carrey did the live adaptation and freaking killed it, dude. Uh, dude, he did so good. For when good. the movie was made, it's like amazing. early 2000s. I feel like it was well done, like aesthetically too. Uh huh. Well, they did it on the Universal Studios lot too. Yeah, like I feel like nowadays they'd probably try to CG it a bit and look corny. It was all just like costume, and it, Jim Carrey is like one of the best physical um, comedic actors I think we have, right? And he just—it's awesome. Yeah, he did such a good job. No one can replace him with being the Grinch, and that's why they did. That's why they did the animated series inst- or the animated movie instead. Oh, I'm sure, so bad. It was horrible. I hate that. Aurora movie. loves it though. It's I so hate it bad. so much. But I'm sure that's why they did the animated one because they're like, well, we can't, we can't do this again. Obviously, right. <laughs> you saw his performance, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready? All right. Um, I know what I'm doing. I, dude, I'm, I'm just playing a fucking safe, just a safe bet. All right. Three, two, one. Seventy-seven. 84. I should. Have gone I'm just playing the same fucking card, man. I wanted to just, do just in the mid eighty. Oh, wait, uh, Grinch. I feel like that's high. This was a two thousand made in two thousand. Wow! Wow! Forty nine percent. Forty nine? Are you serious? Forty nine percent. The Grinch got a forty nine percent audience score. Only fifty six percent. Why don't people like this movie? I don't understand any of this. Lot. You know what? It's probably because the people that I'm hanging out with are all like people that love Elf and The Grinch. So yeah, but like I, I don't like see those movies out. as like so different, like in terms of like quality. It, but but what I'm saying is score. if I were to branch out and like hang out with someone like let's say like someone in Florida, right? And be like, hey, what's your favorite Christmas movie? They're like, uh, it's a wonderful life, duh. And it's like, oh, okay, well that's not mine. Mine's and that's Elf why and you're Grinch. in Florida. That's why I live in Florida. And there's gators in the bathroom. Dude, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think there's that big of a divide between the Grinch and Elf, like even critically, to have it forty points off. Whatever. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Two to two. All right, next movie up is The Santa Claus. Santa Claus 1. Ooh, this is a classic movie. In fact, every year I have to watch this series, 1, 2, and 3. The second one and third one, are they're not third horrible, sucks. but they're amazing. Third Two's pretty good. All right, you ready? Yep. Oh, wait, hang on. Let's let's let's, let's rattle through what it is. Oh, yeah, so it has probably the best what punny, is... like name ever, right? It's The Santa Claus. I don't know how old yes, I was when I, I finally that. realized it. 
That's great. So basically what happens is Tim Allen, again, another Christmas movie for Tim Allen, um, he sees Santa on the roof. And he's like, whoa, what is that? And then he like yells, he's like, hey, buddy. And then Santa falls off the roof, dies, turns into fucking thin air, and then his clothes are still there. And then Tim Allen puts on the suit, and then he's like, hey, how do I look? And then he gets in the sleigh, and then he says, ho. And then they go, and he says, let's go. And then the reindeer take him off, and then he goes and starts like delivering toys. And then he realizes, once he gets to the North Pole, that he is now the new Santa Claus because of the Santa Claus, which means... If someone dies while being Santa and you put the suit on and get in the sleigh, you are now Santa Claus. So every year, his beard starts growing, he gets fatter, and his hair his hair turns white. And then he starts getting like, kind of like uh, in Bruce Almighty where he hears everyone's prayers. He just knows everyone is nice or naughty just by like seeing them as they walk by. He knows their name and what how they were throughout the year. And then... Um, yeah, it just like goes on the journey of him becoming Santa. And then people thinking he's insane because they're like, Santa's not real. I stopped believing in Santa a long time ago. And he's like trying to prove that he is. Fantastic movie. I think, honestly, the premise is amazing. It's a very, very funny movie. And it's got a great storyline. I don't think it's going to get anything less than what my score is going to be. Is Santa Claus, as you're describing it, it's giving like It Follows vibes. And I was just thinking, what if like Santa Claus commits suicide? I don't know. Christmas well, is ruined. But then if, if, if anyone puts the suit on, then they're automatically Santa Claus. Oh, right. I was thinking it's the person that kills Santa Claus is the new Santa Jesus, Claus. Jesus, that's so morbid. <laughs> You're like, fucking Santa's got to die so I can become Santa. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, okay, but there is there is a very morbid part in that movie that I didn't notice until this year. The son is talking to the therapist that is like his stepdad pretty much. And he gives the stepdad some great advice. And he's like, wow, maybe you should look into being a therapist when you get older. And he goes, no, I'm going to go into the family business. So does that mean he's going to fucking kill his dad just just to be Santa? Yes. All right. Well, that was a quick and easy answer. <laughs> Moving on to the next movie. <laughs> oh, wait, no, we got to score it. Let's score it. Oh, right, right. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so three, two, one, 80. 79. <sighs> Damn it. I was going to say 80. I'm so pissed if it's 81 or something like that. Claus, 1994. 71%. Yeah! This one, too. The audience score is lower. Audience score is 65%. Wow. I'm... uh, Wait, which one? Elf got like 80-something, right? Uh, So far, the only ones in the 80s have... I think it's only Elf. Elf was 84. Cranks was like 5%. Home Alone was like 60, I think. Grinch was... I forget... And Santa Claus is 71. So you have three points and I have one or I have two? No, you have two. I, it was it was two to two and now it's three to two. Okay, three to two. Let's go. Next Unless one. I'm keeping score completely wrong. No, I think that's right. Three to two. We got Christmas Story next. It's the movie you they run 24 hours a day on Christmas with... Um, it's actually... There's not really like a huge like bit or theme throughout it. It's just a story of a kid on christmas time and like his family i don't even know is it in the 70s it's his family is just like going about the season the craziness of it um family whatever him wanting a present and asking for it uh, i don't really know why people like this movie now that i'm talking about it i don't remember anything amazing in it it's just kind of like a story of a family during christmas time there's a very memorable scene that I just thought about. You'll shoot your eye out. Uh-huh. You'll shoot your eye. Everyone knows that one. Or Ralphie, I can't get up. Yep, and then the leg lamp is iconic. The kid sticking his oh, tongue yeah, totally. to the pole outside is pretty iconic. Yeah, I actually used to have a a little like plug-in lamp that was a tiny miniature leg lamp. It was pretty awesome. Um, honestly, I gotta say. I have never been a fan of this movie. Like, yeah, there's iconic scenes, but yeah, I think it's I like one really I have to it. respect, but I'm not like excited about. Yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's like everyone everyone's talking about. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life as well. That's a movie that I'm just like I respect it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Like I, I'm okay missing it. The the Christmas Story. I don't watch that ever. Like I don't I don't think I've watched it since I was a kid. Yeah. Um. Let's get down to the scoring. All right. Um. Christmas story. That's what see, I don't know if like they're gonna give it preferable ratings because of its I feel like they will. Alright, I'm ready. Alright. Three, two, one, seventy four. Damn it. I'm really if it's hoping lower, it's less than that. 
Come on, this is iconic, guys. You gotta give it. Um, is it a Christmas story? I think that's it, right? Yeah, it's a Christmas story. 1983. Peter Billingsley is also in the movie Elf. Wow, this is insane. We gotta stop the Rod Tomatoes game because this is just like blasphemy right now. What they're doing. This movie got an 89 percent. You've got to be shitting me right now. That movie sucks ass. Yeah, this movie sucks. This is not... If Christmas with the Craigs gets 5% and a Christmas story gets 89%, I don't want to be right, okay? No, this is bullshit. Fans gave it an 88%. Why? It's not a good movie. Wow. Um, All right, three to three. And now we're going into another one of, like, for me, it's pretty nostalgic. I like this movie. Jingle All the Way. Oh, this is a good movie. I love this movie. With none other than former California governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Put that cookie down. Put that now. cookie down. No. <laughs> um, it's about a very busy businessman who can't find enough time to spend with his uh, family during the holiday times. And he is on a last minute dash to get the hottest new toy for his kid and having a very hard time doing so because he's doing it very, very last minute. So he goes through like these weird closed stores, black market, like back alley crap and stuff like that. All just because he was a bad father um, for the other like 24 days of the month. You got a reindeer again drunk. The, that's a part of the movie. And he's trying to, he's trying to, um, he's trying to find a toy, but I don't, I don't remember the toy's name. Um, uh, Turbo Man. Turbo Man. I keep wanting to say Ultra Lord, but I was like, nah, that's Jimmy Neutron. I know that. Yeah, this movie is pretty cool. It has Sinbad as a mailman in it. It's pretty funny. Oh yeah, I forgot he's in that. Yes. Yeah, and then at the at the end, uh, they have like a little like fight. Those two. Uh huh. I don't want to spoil it for those that haven't seen it because it's pretty good. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. I may be biased because I saw it as a kid and I thought it was hilarious. Usually the movie that you that you liked as a kid, you like now. Um, and this is probably one of those movies. Like if it came out now, I probably wouldn't be like, wow, this is amazing. But it was really good when I was a kid. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think I know what I'm going to grade it. Yep, me too. All right. All right. Three, two, one, 54. 12%. Shit. 54 is high. I think they're going to shit on this movie hard. It has I think they Arnold. are too, but I thought like maybe like, you know, like 30s, like mid 30s. Oh, this is not a so good like, sign. Okay. Do you know that there's a so like, Jingle All the Way number two? No, there is not. It came out in 2014 and it's starring Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> Uh, Jingle All the Way, 1996. Oof, I was on the money. 15%. No. No, 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 no. I really thought you would say higher than that. You've taken the lead, folks. You know, this is way different than like what I wrote down initially because when I took notes earlier, I gave it a 72. Like I'm just inflating oh, man, everything because of off. Christmas. But now I'm I'm in my pocket right now. I'm good. Uh, next movie, Christmas Vacation. Break it down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically, National Lampoon's Christmas um, Vacation. Now, yeah. So the this guy, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember I love this movie. Yeah, it's uh, a. This guy is they they're hosting the vacation, I believe. So it's uh, a Midwest family live in the suburbs, having their uh, in laws, having their cousins and whatnot come over to the house to celebrate for the holidays, like many do. And similar to a Christmas story, it's kind of just like a story about the wacky dynamics that go on during the holidays with family but it's a lot funnier because it's national lampoons yeah it's got chevy chase and then like they get they get into like some weird uh some weird situations one of the situations is the dad's really really riding on a christmas bonus and then they find out later that he doesn't get that christmas bonus and then he has this huge blow up and just things get escalated and it's it's pretty great it's it's funny he has this huge rant. Oh man, I wish I I wish I knew this rant because he like he's like, oh man, I'd like to tell my boss. I'd like to put a big bow on his head and bring him here so that I can tell him what a four flushing something something blah 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 sack of monkey shit he is. Chevy Chase is iconic. I feel like he's very underappreciated. He's had some like amazing not like roles, right? He's not like fucking gonna win an Oscar, but he's been in some awesome movies. Yeah, like uh, Caddyshack. Yeah, that's an iconic movie, right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Um, I feel like I, I want to say he was in Ghostbusters, but I know he's not. No, he was. I don't think he was. No, he's in other movies though that I'm like, oh, if you mention him, I'd be like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that that's a great movie. Um, all right, let's get let's get. I the think he rating. was in. Uh, was he in Animal House? 
I don't know. There, I, I saw it like once just because there was a boob scene and I, I knew <laughs> there was a, a scene. So I fast forwarded to that scene. All right, let's do it. I'm ready for this one. Okay. Um, let me think. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go a very conservative answer. Okay. Three, two, one. 69. 54. Nice. Nice. All right. Christmas vacation. 1989. Oh. 68 percent what is it 68 percent and what did i say what'd you say 69 oh you gotta be shitting me dang it you were so good um i just i won i think you won yeah damn it well let's do the last ones All let's right. just burn through those quickly nightmare before christmas okay so basically jack skellington he's from halloween town he wants to experience something else different in his life because he's like oh my gosh i'm so tired of halloween every single fucking year it's so boring so then he goes to halloween or he goes to christmas town and then he sees that there's all these different worlds that he could look into and he realizes that santa claus is a guy that does a lot of joy and brings happiness to those around him and he's like i want to be that guy so he decides to try to be santa claus and when he does that he actually ends up ruining christmas and making it more like halloween than anything else and then he starts getting shot down from the sky and then realizes that santa claus needs to be santa claus and not him yeah pretty spot on and clay shit yeah it's in claymation i think they're gonna rate high just because of claymation honestly oh for sure dude claymation always gets super high ratings because it's an art all right let's do it all right three two one eighty nine Nightmare before 1993. 95%. <laughs> Stupid. I knew it was going to be in the high, yes. uh, in like the mid 90s, but I'm like, I need Dude. to put like something. That was the best. Some midway. Rotten Tomatoes is saying that is the number one Christmas movie out of all the movies we talked about today is A Nightmare Before Christmas. And I say, fuck you, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> But you know what I also say? Merry Christmas, Daniel. And I'm going to give you a gift early. You're a ninny now. Oh, God. I hate this gift. Can I return it? No. Nope. Do I have a gift receipt? Non-refundable. Shit. Wait, was it the last one? Yeah, that was it. That was nine. I won. Uh, oh, oh, you won nice. that. You got that one. So I won five to four. Ah, that feels good. It feels like a good getting into the holidays, Christmas time. So I'm going into the new year, not in any, you know, really shedding that weight. This is great. I feel awesome right now. Yeah, it feels pretty shitty for me, though. (laughs) Uh, Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed our little rundown on some of our favorite Christmas movies. You, you know, there's no cheating that went into this the full surprise when you heard it from our voices on the shock of some of these movies and how low they are rated i'm sure you're probably just as surprised but um this was fun yeah it was actually i actually really enjoyed doing this kind of stuff because you know you can be completely thrown off by the answers that rotten tomatoes gives you because you have this idea of what a good movie is in your head because you saw it as a kid yeah i saw nightmare before christmas as a kid and i loved it but i also love jingle all the way and they were completely different, <laughs> like way, way different scores. Way different, like shock. And I still, out of this whole list, how Christmas with the cranks to me was a five percent is insane. Yeah, but we're not critics, folks. We got what one more week until Christmas. I hope that you caught up on everything you need to do. I hope you get to just stop and enjoy the joy around you. Um, I hope you ingest the enjoyment. That didn't come out as cool as I was yes. thinking. And I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed making it. So did Bryce. And we'll be back and next week. We'll what? be back next week. It'll be what? So the 4th, 11th, 18th. We'll be back. Uh, we'll probably drop early. We'll drop on Christmas Eve. Probably not Christmas Day because I doubt anyone will be around. So we'll see you on the eve of Christmas, folks. All right. Keep it chiefing. And as always, guys, keep it chiefing.